Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wednesday lunchtime edition of the Celtic State of Mind Bulletin. I'm Colin Watt, and today I'm delighted to be joined not only by my usual Wednesday co-host, um, Amy Canavan, but also by a Celtic State of Mind's David Slate. David, how are you doing? Good, thanks, Colin. Happy to be here. And that's a nice uh, signed shirt you've got behind you. What is that one? Is that the Invincible? The... That's the Invincible shirt. Framed uh, courtesy of uh, Kevin Tate at the penalty spot, Sword Street, Glasgow. So a nice wee plug for him. <laughs> I'm sure he's <laughs> loving that. Amy, how have you been today? I'm doing all right, Colin. Just delighted to be here. It's nice to have David in as well. Get back to a trio. It's always that bit nicer. It means I don't need to talk as much. So, David, <laughs> on you go. <laughs> yeah, David, best. I think... I think you're saving both of us today. I'm suffering from a bit of a cold, so apologies for any um, sort of snottiness you hear coming through. Um, but hay fever season has hit, so we know what is happening there. Um, before we get started today, I just want to pass on um, everyone's best wishes from a Celtic state of mind to Moussa Dembele. That was quite frightening seeing that video yesterday, but by all accounts, he's back up. He actually drove himself away from the training ground afterwards, so... Um, we hope that he's doing okay. We look forward to hearing uh, an update on his health in the next couple of days. David, when you've seen that video, you're first, you just think of the worst straight away, don't you? Yeah, you think of the worst. Um, a really scary moment uh, for everyone. Um, it was heartening to see um, how quickly um, there was help on the scene and not just his teammates, but professional help with an ambulance uh, at the side of the training ground. So it looked like he, looks like he was... Very, very well looked after by the Atletico Madrid staff and um, by all accounts able to drive himself home. So hopefully um, just, a, just a scare for Musa. But that's something you'll perhaps need to keep an eye on going forward. You know, there's been, there's been you know, two or three well-documented cases in the past 10 years of, of something similar happening with, um, w- w- with far more severe consequences. Something, something that, uh, that Musa will perhaps need to keep an eye on as, as his career progresses. Yeah, and Amy, by all accounts, he seemed to be able to drive himself away from the scene, which is always a great sign. Um, for our generation, he's probably one of the best strikers we've seen since Henrik Larsson, so uh, we've always keeping an eye on his progress and his move to Atletico. That this just kind of came at the wrong time for him, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It is, it's a tough one. Um, and no matter who it is, it doesn't matter that it's uh, the kind of Glasgow derby. It's not at all. But it, it's never nice to see. Um, so like you say, it's good to see him back on his feet, um, driving away, give a wee thumbs up. But it was... Um, yeah, it was a little bit of a fright. And as David says, it's just something that obviously you've just got to keep an eye on. And you hope, I don't know if it's maybe a little bit of the heat, but you would think growing up in France, it's not like it's one of us going over and it's not really <laughs> our sort of culture. But like you say, it's just one of these things that you need to keep an eye on and um, all the best wishes to, to Musa. Yeah, and I know that he still keeps up with a lot of what's happening at Celtic. He's he's a player that's took Celtic to his heart, and we've certainly took him to our hearts. So, all the best to Moussa Dembele. Um, but let's let's talk about the kind of big breaking news that came out of Celtic last night, um, and it's probably a, an interview that came out of the blue from the majority shareholder Dermot Desmond. Amy, when you first saw the post coming out, were you surprised to hear from Dermot? I think I was more just surprised to see actually what was inside. Um, and I think we've probably got a little bit of a cheek to call it an interview. That's a fan Q&A. That's Jerry McCulloch's got his kids to, to to make up those questions and chuck them at him. That's not an interview. Um, for him to come out and say what he said, that's managing to say something without really saying anything. Make it look like, oh, we're making a little bit of a statement. I'll answer your questions. But nothing in there is, is meriting he's not really holding his hands up and the stuff that he is holding his hands up for he's sort of belitt- belittling the fans at the same time no we saw this coming pundits saw this coming that was a publicity stunt mm-hmm. it epitomises having a dig at Brian Dempsey as well that epitomises it's a publicity stunt um, I wasn't impressed by it at all um, there's a lot of things in there and I know we'll delve into that so I'll let David um, give his overriding views to start with but no there's there's a lot in there that's just not, not right it's sitting right for me yeah, David, seven questions and they were apparently raised by supporters. Now, I know a lot of fans have emailed in to John Paul Taylor as the Celtics uh, SLO this season. Mm-hmm. Do you think that was really a, a a general overview of what's been sent in? Or do you think this was specifically handpicked for Dermot just to come out with the, I know what I'm going to reply back to them and say? Well, doubtless the questions were handpicked. Um, uh, I, I, and... Dermot Desmond chose to answer them in his own way. Um, 
uh, look, the one the one line that I sort of really picked out from that was that critics are in no place to judge what they can't see. They can't yeah. judge what we can't see. He was saying, and 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 that's fair enough. Um, but but I mean I think that the, the thing he also said the season had been extremely disappointing and one of the most disappointing aspects of the season for me has been not just the not just the performances on the park I mean that, that that's obvious to everyone but but the communication from the club and and I made this point the last time I was an Axon and it hasn't been the best um, uh, and uh, whether it's yesterday's interview from Dermot Desmond or the interview that Peter Lowell gave in January after the uh, Dubai fiasco, when when the club has communicated with the fans, it, it, hasn't, it, it perhaps hasn't been as well judged as it might have been. But they're on a hiding to nothing. Every time mm-hmm. they communicate, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a sort of social media pile on, um, they can't see anything right, um, I, I, and basically, until performances are much better on the field, um, almost regardless of what the club does or doesn't say, um, it, you know, it, 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 the, 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 there's going to be there's going to be enormous criticism. Um, but I didn't I didn't think the interview was especially enlightening. Um, mm-hmm. He didn't tell us much that we didn't already know. The interview that he gave to. The athletic two or three months ago before christmas was 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 better and and, and more enlightening in terms of his thinking as an individual i think uh, I think what Brian Dempsey had said in the Times was probably the catalyst for 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 Dermot deciding to go public just now now we 've seen this um, from Dave Cormack in Aberdeen where the questions have also been coming in about who would take over as the Aberdeen manager, um, and he provided a couple of updates to the fans. Celtic fans asked for that sort of correspondence from the club, and this was their attempt at it. The first question coming out saying, um, when will we know about the new manager being put in place? Um, (laughs) And there was a a bit in that answer where it says that we um, go through a, a strenuous process of looking at candidates and their skills and their strengths, and then you take a look back and say, uh, well, um, we appointed Neil Lennon in the showers at Hamden. So w- what Dermot Desmond's telling the truth there? Is it the Dermot Desmond that we believe is now part of the team to pick the new manager? Or was it just a case of, ah, uh, we, we had all these CDs, but we just stuck them in the drawer. Lenny was always our man. Amy, I'll throw that one out to you first. You're just sort of sitting there going, "Well, what's the next line? What what are you to believe?" Um, I think as well in that little in that little comment, it's almost like, "Oh, we're not really at liberty to say like what we're looking for in a manager." I'm not asking them to come out and go, "We are wanting an Eddie Howe, we are wanting an Roberto Martinez." Of course, you're not going to come out and name drop, but they never even mentioned. I think maybe I'm looking into it a little bit too much. They use the word manager not head coach. Now, I could be wrong, but I think if you're looking at director of football, then you're looking more down the head coach role. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's little there's little things in there that's not worded quite right. And like as, as David said, it wasn't really enlightening us and there was nothing that we already, we didn't already know. Um, so to really, to come out and go, yeah, we're looking for a manager. Well, we know we're looking for a manager. We don't have a manager right now. We're looking for a head coach. We don't have one. That's It was just not really answering the question. But like I say, I think out of that, what I took out of it was that it was manager and not head coach. David, is that something that you picked out as well? I did, but I probably... My personal view is that I wouldn't read too much into the terminology used. But, but I mean, Celtic know when they put out an interview like that that absolutely every every sentence, if not every word, is going to be is going to be poured over by by the support. And of course, that's that's exactly what hap- what's happening. What 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 he did tell us is that um, uh, you know he, he gave he gave some insight into the um, into the decision makers. Um, as well as Ian Bankier, um, uh, Peter Lowell's involved, um, and Dominic Mackay, the new CEO, um, has some input, uh, according to Dermot Desmond as well, as you, as you would expect. I've, I've no reason to doubt that any of that's true. I have no reason to doubt also that they're going through, uh, this time, um, a, a pretty thorough um, search, you know, that, that, that involves a number of parameters. The fact that they didn't the last time, 
simply underscores the need to do that this time because I think everybody was a bit disappointed and underwhelmed the last time and the way the appointment was made uh, in the aftermath of the cup final win over Hearts was it was just a it, it, it just kind of lent itself to, to criticism and I'm sure if the club could perhaps rewind on the way that was handled they might they might do it differently disappointing to hear last time that CVs were just sort of shoved in the draw and, 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 and kept for a rainy day well the rainy day has now arrived so mm-hmm. um, those CDs CVs are perhaps having the, the, the dust blown off them and let, let's hope that um, a much more rigorous approach is being taken this time if what Dermot Desmond says is true then it would seem that that's the case yeah, I've got to agree with you there. Um, and t- it the, goes on to the next point, sorry, um, of who they're saying is in charge of this whole process. So Peter Lowell, Dermot Desmond, Ian Bankier and Dominic Mackay will be part of that process. A lot of Celtic fans will be asking, why is Peter Lowell involved? Now, we know that Dominic Mackay isn't taking over until the summer. That's been confirmed not only by Celtic but by Scottish Rugby. Um, that they won't let him go until the confirmed date that was already put in as part of the press conference and part of the press releases. Um, Does that suggest to you, Amy, that we'll see an appointment in before we see Dominic Mackay come into the draw? I think that's what you've got to take out of it. Um, Because if not, then why has Lowell got an opinion after whatever date it is that Mackay comes in, sorry, the 1st of July or whatever it is? Um, so again, and right now you've still got you've still got to give him his place. Right now he currently still is the CEO. You mm-hmm. Can't just totally and utterly shut him out. No matter how many Celtic fans would maybe want that. Um, so yeah, again, but as David says, he was also part of that process the last time. Those CVs chucked into the cupboard for that rainy day. Well, then he knows the cupboard. He knows where the drawer is. Get them out. So of course you've still got to include him as we say right now because at the end of the day it is still his role. Yeah, David, what you, obviously you mentioned that the idea of Dominic Mackay having the involvement. You'd like to think that he will definitely have at least a say on the final candidates if he's not already involved in some other things that's going on behind the scenes at the club at the minute. I've absolutely no doubt that he will. I mean, I've some, I've some experience of how corporate governance works and how boards work. And um, I've absolutely no doubt that Dominic Mackay's incoming CEO will have um, a very strong say in uh, in who the new man is, and um, I, I, I think the fact that Peter Lowell is the outgoing CEO will be will be factored into discussions as uh, as well, and 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 his views perhaps weighted accordingly. I mean, let's not forget that for all that this season has been extremely disappointing, to put it euphemistically, um, you know, Peter Lowell has a. a, a, a uh, a track record of sound achievement over the last 10, 15 years. Um, there, there are things with which we could all take issue. There are individual decisions that, that perhaps haven't been the right ones. He's admitted to mistakes. But his track record over the period in which he has been the CEO of Celtic has, in my view, been, been the, the good out, far outweighs outweighs the bad. So I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with Peter Lowell having some input to the decision process at the moment. I'd be surprised if he didn't. Um, he's the incumbent CEO. I'm quite sure Dominic Mackay um, will, have, will have input as well. I think, I think the really interesting thing is that um, the, 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 the timing of Dermot Desmond's interview uh, mm-hmm. and the timing of any new managerial appointment, you would, you would think that with season ticket renewals in the offing, they have to get a new manager in before Dominic Mackay arrives. Um, and therefore, my gut feel is that an appointment isn't very far away. Uh, that, 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 that's, that, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I think you might have hit the nail on the head there. I mean, if we take a look back at it this time last season, the season ticket renewal forms are already out. And it was the earliest that I can remember as a season ticket holder that the forms had kind of came through the door. They don't even do that so much anymore. If you've already renewed online, you don't even get a, a letter in the post anymore. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. I think we'll be able to see in the next week or two um, the form coming out, what's going to be offered to fans as additional value for this year's um, sort of... A lot of people will say it's a fiasco. Um, we can go in depth as to the kind of additional value you've had from your season ticket this year. What can they do to encourage fans to renew for next season? There'll be a lot that happens before Celtic take to the field again to play Livingston in the first game after the, the split. Um, 
but you, you said something there, and it was actually a direct lift and quote from what Dermot Desmond said last night. He said, the season has been extremely disappointing, but for anyone who could have foresaw the outcome of this season is extremely disingenuous. I don't agree with that at all. I don't think anybody could have been... And Amy, I can see you're shaking your head as well. I don't think it's disingenuous to suggest that fans could have saw that um, Celtic were heading in the wrong direction from very early on into the season. Um, I, I probably was one of the first on here to say that Lennon should have left, and that's as far back as Finnich Varos. Um, some people will have said that he should never have got the job. I mean, Amy, thats I don't think that's fair on the kind of people that he's coming out. He's defending his own position there, but I don't think it's fair to suggest it's disingenuous. We all have a, a say uh, as fans, and it was never at that point, you're doing this completely wrong, this is completely out of order. We'll go on to the part where it says that the board's not fit for purpose, but in this particular part of the interview, uh, I think it was a bit early to come out and start swinging the bat at people. Yeah, you can't come out, like you say, you can't come out and swing the bat. People did force you this. And, OK, right, maybe you can say more than most think than anything. Maybe you didn't see this Celtic collapse happening. But no, you did see. You saw Rangers building. Now, this has been happening. They dropped down to the lowest division in Scottish football. We should be light years ahead of them. We should be decades and decades ahead. They have been building something. Gerard has been building something. The media, the media have pressed on it that the five ones, the five nils, it was, it was getting that little bit closer. It was two ones, it was one nils, and you can look into them. But you don't even need to look at the results. You just look at what Rangers has been building. You look at them getting Glenn Kamara for, what was it, fifty grand or something? They got Glenn Kamara for. And that's an absolute bargain for Dundee. He was on our doorstep as well. He was he didn't he wasn't somebody that they went away to Bulgaria and got or Hungary. No, he was at Dundee. We we had him in our vision as well. Um you can see that talent. But like I say, the biggest thing is, is it's not even you can take that step back and go, right, nobody you can say, right, maybe nobody expected Celtic to capitulate quite as big as this. No, I didn't. I didn't see this happening. But you saw Rangers build in and that's what it we should be absolutely light years ahead of them and now they've overtaken they've overtaken us and they have it's and it's a disgrace that this has managed to happen we have been sleeping giants we have let this happen we've watched that it's been total and utter complacency david is it disingenuous to suggest that some people saw this coming before even a ball was kicked <sighs> i think a lot of people were concerned even even last season um I mean, the team. The team last season played extremely well. At, at, you know, at times, let's not forget, home and away wins over an excellent Lazio side, um, and the Celtic team was playing really, really well um, when you know COVID intervened in in, in March of in March of mm-hmm. last year, and we, we were well ahead of Rangers in the league at that stage, and and, and probably odds on to beat them at least once more. In, in the two remaining um, fixtures against them at that point last season, um, I think it, it, it has been an extremely disappointing season. People have called it an unmitigated disaster. It's difficult to pick out too many highlights, that's for sure. Yeah. But a, a few points have made. One, I, I don't think were. I don't think we're, we're, we're far away at all from being able to compete with Rangers um, next season. Um, I, I think I think that was clear from the performance on on Sunday. I, I know we're going to come back to that, so I'll leave that mm-hmm. there for now. Yep. Um, I think Celtic invested uh, quite heavily uh, last summer uh, in terms of bringing players in. The fact that um, uh, arguably uh, uh, only Turnbull's been a an unqualified success of, of, of the of the inbound players is is is, is disappointing, but the, the investment was there, whether it was in terms of, of salaries or transfer fees, and and I think it's interesting also that, and it's a bit ironic, even if we'd even if we'd done ten in a row, the pressure would be on now to do eleven for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's been where well, everyone's been talking last week or so about the the fact that almost certainly. Um, Scotland, the winner of the Scottish uh, Premier League next season, will have a, a direct access to the the Champions League group stages. So there's mm-hmm. 30 million pounds minimum up for grabs, effectively to the winner of the SPFL next season. So I mean, uh, the, the team the team was coming to the end of a cycle anyway, 
and maybe it's as maybe it's almost as well that it's, it's it's happened when it's happened and we can regroup and go for it next year because if it happened hasn't happened last season it, it would have happened next season yep. the, 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 we're, we're going to lose Edouard we're going to lose Ayer we're going to lose a, Scott Brown was, was coming to the end of his career we were going to lose a lot of players anyway Fra- Fraser Foster was going to m- move on at some point whether it was whether it was when he did or, or, or at the end of this season so so, so things were re- kind of reaching the end, the end, the end of a cycle, and and um, you know we, we've got a chance now to to regroup and and go for that uh, champion guaranteed or seemingly guaranteed Champions League group stage um, spot at the end of this at the end of the next season, and it's really important we do that. And I don't think we're a million miles away from being able to compete. It's essential that we get the managerial appointment right, though. Yeah, I think if you take a look at the last two games against Rangers. Um, and compare it to the first game and even the games last season, it, they were really close-run games. It was. We should never let it got to that, though. Sorry, we should never no, let it got to that. No, I agree with you. Um, I agree with you. You just kind of think sometimes you just don't take your chances, and I think that's what happened on Sunday, and we'll, we'll cover that. Um, but you're right. We're not. The gap's not massive. We're not looking to close a big gap next season. Okay, you can take a look at the points on the the, the board. And the amount of points we've dropped this season has been silly. But in, when you compare it to the two games, the last two games that we've had against them, I don't think there's a, a such a big gap to close. What is an issue, though, and it's the point that you made there, David, is we are going to have quite a high turnover of players this summer. Now, that's either going to take it one way or the other. It's either going to take it to the fact that we close that gap, we get back to that period of dominance that we've had over the last nine years, or... and. It's what was said in the report was this is going to be a transitional year. Now you mentioned there, if you win the league next season, you've almost got this clear run to what can be anything up to forty, fifty million pounds in Champions League money next year. You can't really afford for Celtic to be going through a transitional year to the point of well, we're still not challenging for the title. I don't know who that is, whoever wants to take that. Um, Amy, I'll, I'll throw it out to you. Can this be a transitional season next year or has the fact that we haven't challenged this year already been the start of the transition? Well, it has to continue because right now nothing's looking... Like, you can say that we maybe played well the last two games against Rangers. Sunday meant nothing. It's a club that have already won the title. They just came off an absolutely horrendous fiasco from Thursday night and I'm not talking about the football I mean and everything else that takes its toll um, and that will take its toll everything that's happened with Glen Kamara and everything that's happened with the whole system they deserve what they what they have going on they weren't going into this game how we should have been going into it we should we should have been light years still ahead of them on Sunday yeah maybe we played that a little bit better um, but at the end of the day we never got the result and that's what fundamentally matters so it has to be a transitional period next year. It has to be because, like I say, I can't believe that we'd even... It's just why we're, we're having to talk about, all right, OK, maybe the gap, we're not having to close is that big. We shouldn't mm-hmm. even need to be closing a, gla- a gap. I keep going back. That League Cup final that we we stole off Rangers, that yeah. should have been the turning point and that should have been the red flag while they're on our tails. And again, we slept and we've let them overtake. And I take nothing from Sunday, and I know we'll come on to that, but I don't take a lot of positives. Yeah, OK, the first 45 was decent. first 45 at Ibrox was decent. Never took a result at the end of it. And for them, it was a dead rubber on Sunday. And I know you can say, OK, playing Celtics, maybe not a dead rubber. But in the grand scheme of things, of course it is for them. Yeah, I, I feel as if that, and I think it was put um, maybe by the guys on the Monday club, it did feel like an almost a testimonial, a friendly towards the end of that game on Sunday. Both teams were happy with what they got. No one was really throwing themselves at it. And uh, I don't know what else we could have expected. The league's over. Um, But for me, I wanted Celtic to go out there and try and get some pride back and to get the points. I mean, it's getting to the stage now that the last time Celtic in the league beat Rangers, Johnny Hayes scored. That's how far back we're going. It's, It's quite a sad thought considering the kind of period of dominance we've had over this last nine years and how quick it's just disappeared. But David, can Celtic have a transitional season next year and still push for the league title? I think so, yes. Um, but but I, I expect there'll be um, quite significant investment in the in the team this summer. Um, I'm, I'm as frustrated as anyone 
Uh, look, in, in my in my unguarded moments, I'm banging my head against a brick wall in my, my flat here uh, at the way this season has gone, at the way that um, Rangers have been allowed to, 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 to close the gap on us. Um, uh, and in many ways, I'd agree with, 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 with Amy and others that we, we should be we should be light years ahead of them, and it, it's it's really frustrating that that, that we're not. But I, 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 the gauntlet's been laid down, the challenge has been laid down. I expect Celtic to invest heavily in the squad this summer. I hope they make the right managerial appointment. I, I, I probably is every fan you interview will have a different opinion on it. I, I, I've got my own. Um, uh, I think the managerial appointment is the is the most important of all, and I do think it's worth it's worth paying a high salary to attract the best possible candidate. Um, it, when, when we look at some of the, the the money that's been, I regret to say, frittered away on on mm-hmm. on the salary of players who've contributed very very little, um, you know, investing that money in in a top quality coach, uh, I think would really pay dividends. But I expect a strong investment in the squad in the summer. Uh, and I think Celtic will absolutely be in a position to uh, to, to compete next season. And um, I, 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 I'm, I'm really quite optimistic as regards uh, as regards the the twenty one twenty two campaign. The next two questions that were part of the interview was something that actually quite surprised me um, that it was put towards him. And if I'm being honest, I don't think this is the way that it was asked to Demet Desmond. The first one was about not being a true fan. It's a criticism that we've seen all over social media um, over the last, not just 12 months, but for the last period of time, that Dermot isn't actually a true fan. Uh, quite a few people in the comment section today already saying that he's a Manchester United fan first, Celtic fan second. Um, and then the, the second one about the board not being fit for purpose. I'm going to combine the two of these together just to kind of um, keep us on track here for time. But basically the not the true fan thing came from what you mentioned earlier, uh, David, about Brian Dempsey's article in the Times on fan ownership mm-hmm. um, and his response back basically says that when you take a look at the period that we're in, it's nowhere quite near the, the situation we were in the 90s. Celtic are financially strong and have a stable ownership and I have to agree with him. When you take a look at Celtic's yeah. financial performances considering some of the performances we see of teams across Europe during this pandemic it is head and shoulders above them. They're still minimising the losses as much as possible they've built up this reserve over a, over a period of time where a lot of people, including myself were asking us to invest in the team to get that um, kind of drive forward to push for um, success in Europe and the fact that we managed to have this reserve of cash and we've been able to bring through players that we've been able to sell on is probably what has seen us through this period and I don't think we're at the end of the point where we could still see in six months' time teams going under because they just don't have the ability to survive through this period without having fans at the games. Um, Amy, the, the, the not a true fan. Do you think do you think Desmond's really that bothered about people coming out and saying you're not a true fan, or do you think this one really hit him? Well, it's obviously something that he's felt that now he's had to come out and say it again in this interview or whatever you, fan Q and A at this time. I'll be honest, I don't really care if he's a fan or not right now. Um, it's How long has he been in the position? 17, 18 years or something like that? I don't know how long he's been. I have no idea how long he's been in it, right? Uh, it, to me right now, it doesn't really matter. Is this a really crunch question that needs to be asked right now? No, not really. So it is a little bit of a publicity stunt, I feel, and it's coming out in response to, obviously, Brian Dempsey, as David alluded to, and what, what he said at the, in, in the time, sorry. <laughs> It's a tough one, obviously, as well. So I'm not going to sit here and try and compare these times to the 90s. And obviously, this is what he's he spoke about. I wasn't there. But I can only take it down to what people around me are saying. Now, I, I know that like my dad's not as worried as what he was in the 90s. And he tells me about that. So, But I'm not going to sit here and try and compare. And this, what this one definitely is for David. And he's far more clued up on this for me. But like I say, right now, do I really mind if Dermot Desmond's not the biggest fan in the world? Not really. It's not really been a topic point of... Uh, it has been a topping point over the years, but why does it need to be spoke about now as everything that's coming around right now, this, is, this isn't this is a crunch question. David, do you agree with that? The, the idea of um, not being a true fan? It's, 
is it just something that he's uh, came out and just wanted to swat away at the first chance he got? It's obviously hit a raw nerve. Um, yeah. I certainly think Dermot Desmond has a Celtic state of mind, to coin a phrase. Whether or not he's a whether or not he's a died in the wall fan is 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 perhaps a a different question. But I think he's certainly somebody who has a, a feeling for the club, and I think that I do think that's important in the in the in the majority shareholder. Um, I mean, people talk about fan ownership. I'm not really sure what they mean. Um, I mean, do we want do we want a, a, a German style fifty plus one rule where? Where um, e- effectively the, the the club is run l- like a members' club, or, or almost like an English county cricket club, albeit with with an executive um, board of directors, so mm. that uh, so that f- at least fifty percent plus one share are in the ownership of the fans, and no private investor can take uh, can take more than fifty percent of the shares. Is that is that what's is that if that's is that what's meant? Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure. I think people talk about fan ownership without necessarily thinking through exactly what they mean and the impact that would have in terms of investment in the club. Celtic has been financially, in terms of the bottom line, Celtic's been a very, very well-run club for a long period of time. Uh, I get a bit exasperated, as I know others do, in terms of the, the lack of appetite to speculate, to accumulate. But but in, in terms of um, corporate and fiscal responsibility, Celtic's been very well run for a long time. That is yep. why we are sitting on £20, £25 billion pounds in the bank. That is why we've been able to survive a, a season with nobody inside Celtic Park. Um, you, you look at the... Uh, I mean, you know, R- R- Rangers have, have lost something like fifty million pounds since uh, the new club was formed in two thousand and twelve, um, and it, 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 it beats me how, under financial fair play rules, they've been allowed to do what they have done. I mean, it seems to be just entirely financed by by soft loans. Celtic haven't gone down that route. They have a majority shareholder who is who, who is um, he might not be everybody's cup of tea, but he's a Celtic-minded individual. I think it's a relatively a benign despot in some ways, you, you, you might say. Uh, and um, I, I, think, I think as a club, Celtic has been well run financially for a long period of time. That doesn't mean to say that uh, I agree with every decision that's been taken or that the, 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 the right decisions have been taken in terms of the team on the park each and every step of the way. I think it's clear that, that hasn't hasn't been the case at times. But, but we're, we're, we're fortunate that we've we've got, you know, 20, 25 million pounds in the bank to ride out this storm. You look at the amount of money that some of the clubs, particularly in France, are losing this season with with uh, with the with the TV deal over there having mm-hmm. collapsed. No fans in stadium, no season ticket revenue. You've got you've got average sized clubs in France. I, look, I was reading Le Keep the other day. Saint Etienne have lost thirty five million euros this season. That's completely unsustainable. And mm-hmm. and with 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 no immediate prospect of fans getting back inside the ground, that cannot continue much longer. I think the real economic impact of COVID has yet to be felt. When, when the furlough scheme is switched off in in, in the autumn, let's let's see what happens. Uh, I, I I think there could be casualties. The the one part out of those two questions that really jumped out to me um, and it's probably the biggest criticism we've had of the board is that they came on and says um, we conduct our business in a professional manner and behind closed doors that's been the biggest issue with Celtic this season is things getting carried out behind closed doors not interacting with the fan base um, and they see it as a positive Amy, if they just if we had more updates like this from Dermot Desmond throughout the season Maybe some of the pressure would have been taken off him. A lot of that is probably coming down to the performances on the field, which he's agreed has been poor. He also agrees that off the the park we've been poor as well. And I think that's one of the things that he, he has to work on, especially when Dominic Mackay comes in, is building that relationship back with the fans and having that communication. Certain things should take place behind closed doors, but other things, this is where we need to get the fans involved. Read the room, Desmond, eh? Like you're literally everything right now is that there's such a lack of communication, such a lack of transparency. And as you say, certain things do have to be conducted behind closed doors. Of course they do. You're not looking for total and utter transparency. This is a business. And as, as David's rightly saying, look, I'm 20 years old and I've never seen the club in any sort of financial woes. I've never thought, sort of thought, oh God, we're not sitting on a lot of money or oh, we've just had this massive loss. What are we going to do? Because it is a well-oiled machine. It really is, and it's running well, and it's the money's there, and everything is is a is it's a business, and it's succeeding. Um, but like I say, read the room. 
yeah. you're literally begging for a sort of some communication you come out and use this interview which we can honestly you cannot call that an interview because that is an insult to all interviews it's a q a it's a, it really is and and you're literally just you're closing the door you're saying everything you're closing the door by saying things are going on behind closed doors and that's the way it's going to be it's just it's just a, it's a farce from last night it really is it's a farce david what do you think the farce I wouldn't say it's a farce. I, I, I understand the frustration. I, I, I really do. Um, I, I think I think there's been one or two raw nerves um, hit uh, recently in terms of the Brian Dempsey interview in the Times, in terms of people um, uh, questioning whether or not Dermot Desmond is is really emotionally invested in in, in Celtic, and, and I think he's wanted to respond to that. And it, in in some ways. Uh, dressing up what was a, a, an answer to uh, answers to kind of planted questions as an interview w- w- wasn't perhaps the most elegant way of putting it across. Um, but I don't, you know, a statement wouldn't have been welcomed either. Um, at least there's been some communication from from Dermot Desmond. I, I think in terms of keeping the managerial. Uh, stuff behind closed doors. I think that's exactly the right thing to do, as they did with the CEO, Dominic Mackay, blindsided the media, appointed uh, what would appear to be a very good and credible candidate um, uh, with, with no fuss or fanfare. And I, I hope they'll do the same thing with, uh, with, 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 with the manager. I, I, I just think that the, the frequency and tone of the, of the communication strategy needs to be needs perhaps to be to be reviewed. I, I, do, I do understand what Amy says when she says read the room and I, I, can, I can sense probably at home people are, are blowing a gasket with, um, with, with, with you know with what I'm saying just now it, but, but some communication is better than no communication. Uh, um, uh, Dermot Desmond didn't say much in, in last night's interview, but he didn't lighten us on one or two points. Right now, it's nothing like as bad as it was in the mid 1990s. The club's on a stable footing. Um, mm-hmm. We've got we've got a, a sixty thousand all seater stadium built. Um, we've, we've, we're sitting on a hefty bank balance, um, but it, it's really this is this is a really important summer coming up. Uh, and there are two or three uh, key hiring decisions in terms of um, manager, coaching staff, director of football, uh, new captain, uh, a, a new defence um, that, that need to be taken and need to be right if we're going to compete next next season. And if Celtic do those behind closed doors and get them right, I'll be quite happy. Yeah, and that's how the interview wraps up here. Basically saying the hopes for next season is that they play football that the fans want. They give manager the time to implement his own plans um, and more success will surely follow. That's all um, that Celtic fans want for next season is to get back to the success that they've had over the last nine years. Um, And it's probably a kind of a bow to put on the end of that interview to try and kind of end it on a positive Amy, looking at the interview as a whole, are you satisfied, as we said here in the, the comments, are you satisfied with the update itself overall? As David said, you can't, we can't be sitting here going, right, we're, we're demanding communication and we're crying we're not getting communication. Now we've, we've had something, so you've got to take, right, something's been said. I don't, I'm not exactly satisfied with the contents, but at the end of the day, that bridge has sort of been crossed or attempted to be built there's been that little bit of interaction no matter how how you want to define it. Just another point just in it, he did say that obviously the board have made wrong calls what are those wrong calls? Mm -hmm. That wasn't highlighted, it's it's that dangling the carrot, it's we'll say we've done it, is is he meaning appointing Lennon in the changing rooms, is he meaning is he meaning not selling players on in the summer, bringing in the money that he's now saying that players were up for sale and offers were made even though earlier on we were told that there was no sort of offers made there's just a lot of contradictory statements in the interview so am I satisfied with it no but am I satisfied that something's happened and something's been said yes because we can't sit here and and um, slate the club and go x y and z and go we are not getting any form of communication we've had that now so we have to take a positive out of that that something has been answered if well maybe being answered is the wrong terminology to use but that connection has been made something's been said if we like what's in it then that's a different conversation that we just had so to answer your question no i'm not satisfied 
Thanks, Amy. <laughs> no worries. Um, <laughs> David, were you satisfied or um, do you agree with what Amy just said? I'm not satisfied with the communication uh, communication from the club. Um, I think they've been I think they've been lacking over the last um, over the last six to nine months. Whether it's been uh, in, in terms of the sort of macro level communications, talking about you know the the, the 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 direction of travel of the club as a whole, or whether it's been in terms of um, communication at, with individual season ticket holders in terms of you know the the the, the proverbial value add that that we're, we're 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 supposed to receive or not receive as part of season ticket packages. I, I think it. I think the whole thing's left something to be desired. Um, and you know, as I said, com- the communication last night. You know, it's 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 it's, it's better than nothing. I, I I don't think it struck quite the right tone, uh, and I think that um, I, I I think that it was primarily. Um, the communication was made to to, 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 to to fight back at people like Brian Dempsey rather than necessarily communicate with the with the with the support. But but look, if and when they get things right on the park, everybody will calm down, uh, 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 and that's 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 the fundamental. Uh, uh, and whether or not the communication strategy is right or wrong or leaves something to be desired will matter a whole lot less if we've got a winning team on the park. Taking a look at the the statement overall, I think there was certainly um, some points that should have been made a long time ago, and it's good to see Dermot Desmond actually taking them on board. Um, The the points about not being a true fan, um, coming out and and backing himself and backing the club and backing the work that's been done, that's what you want to see um, from a guy in that position. But overall, as a statement, um, it's a bit like closing the stable door after the horse has bolted. This has come far too late. And I feel as if it's the, the start of the PR strategy to start selling the season tickets for next season. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised now that if you see this announcement yesterday, within the next week or two, we'll have the director of football, we'll have the new manager in place, um, and we'll also have probably the assistants and the, the season tickets will be on sale. Do you think I'm maybe just being a bit facetious here, David? Do you, do you think that's probably part of the plan? It might be. I, I certainly, I, I don't see how they can... Given everything that's happened this season, I, I, I don't see how the club can credibly launch a season ticket renewal campaign without a new manager in place. Uh, I, I, I suspect that the um, uh, that, that, that paddling furiously beneath the surface at the moment in terms of um, in terms of sifting through managerial candidates and, and, and trying to make um, trying to make an appointment. I think they'll want they want a bottom on the manager's seat um, and a director of football a- announcement um, before. Uh, before the season ticket renewal campaign um, commences, uh, I had a communication this week regarding um, my hospitality season ticket and the level of refund that uh, or credit that I would be um, due in regard to the season that's just gone. Um, so that's all gearing up towards you know se- season tickets and, and hospitality packages going on on sale again very shortly, um, and I. I I fully expect some key announcements before that campaign begins in earnest. And it's up to you if you want to answer this, David, but I'm sure a lot of people that are watching would like to know, what was the offer that was given to you by the club, just in general terms? Uh, About 25% back on my season ticket, um, hospitality package. That's an interesting one. I think if that was something that was instituted across the board, and Amy, I'd be interested to get your thoughts on that. 25% 25% back on the season ticket for not being able to get into the grounds this season. Do you think that would encourage fans to renew for next year? As David says, I don't really think... No matter, I, I, I find it very hard to understand and really put like a plausible statement and quest forward without having any sort of improvement from this season. And that is obviously meaning the improvement being having a manager in place. It, it's, that That's fundamentally, no matter what they offer, the biggest thing right now is going to be getting a manager in place, getting some sort of structure, because right now then it's just it's just rejuvenating the mess. I think it's important to point out, um, Colin, I mean, the, 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 in, terms of, in terms of refunds or, or credits, it's in relation to... Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sitting running a, 
a, a, a table for six in the in the Walford, that's for sure. I mean, I, I've mm-hmm. got a club Celtic season ticket, and it's a it's a it's a free pie and a cup of tea at half time and a free program. That that's kind of about it. Um, but but uh, and a padded seat, but. But I mean, what what they've what they've offered to refund is that the sort of unused hospitality element of the season ticket, and, and you know I suppose that's uh, that's fair enough because I've not been able to I've not been able to take advantage of my uh, my free pies and my free cups of tea and my free programme. So so that, that's I, I think the credit the credit relates uh, relates to that. We've got to remember that you know every every pound taken out of the club. Whether it's by by us or or anyone else means le- less less of a budget to invest in the playing side of things next season. I mean, I hear, hear people talking about you know asking for refunds in full of season tickets, and if Celtic did that, that's uh, that, that's that's the that's the bank balance wiped out right there. Um, uh, so some clubs on the continent have, continent have been able to do that. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach offered. I uh, said the last time I was on Axum, they offered a, uh, they've given, in fact, never mind offered, they have given a complete refund to every single season ticket holder. But they're sitting on a big German TV contract. Celtic mm-hmm. are not. Celtic are much more dependent upon revenue at the gate than, than clubs in the, in the top four or five leagues. Um, and so uh, if, if we want to compete, if we want to compete next season and we want to see the requisite investment in the playing uh, side of the team, then I, I, I think Celtic, you know, need to be careful and cautious in terms of uh, in terms of refunds and credits um, at, at, the, at the end of this season. Not everybody's in the same boat. I know this is a, this is a really difficult and sensitive issue, and lots of people have struggled like mad through COVID, and and, and finances are tighter than ever. So everybody's got their own uh, got their own problems and difficult difficulties in that regard. But but every every hundred pounds that Celtic credit the support that an individual season ticket holder for is hundred pounds that can't be invested in the in, in 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 getting back to normal on the playing field. I think what you've got to look at as well is the the side of the additional value that was to be offered to the normal season ticket holders as well. I mean, when you look at it, you can log on to Celtic TV about 45 minutes to an hour before the game, you get given a team basically built up of Celtic coaches who are the experts to guide you through it. And you saw what happened when it came up head-to-head against the game being on Sky at the weekend. They bring in Matt Smith from BT and ITV to host it. Now, over the period, we started with Rory Hamilton alongside Darren Adi, alongside Michael Stewart, I think it was at one point as well. And then as the season went on, it got less, it got down to Peter Martin, it then went down to Jerry McCulloch as your um, your commentary team. Hosting it as well, we were promised that we'd get a lot of these ex celts that are in the, the media, Hearts and Sutton, people like that. Now it's getting to the point of, well, we've got Darren Adia as a coach, we've got, um, before he became first team coach, we've got Stephen McManus. Where was the additional value for the Celtic fans in terms of the, the season ticket this year? It wasn't as if there was a, a a big kind of here's Celtic TV for a year. Go and look at some of the the previous games. Go and take a look at the Lazio game all over again because it was the highlight of last season. Go and watch the six two game from Martin O'Neill's era that you can do if you subscribe as a Celtic F, a Celtic TV um, subscriber around the world. We were basically told here's a website that you can log into and you can log in an hour before. Here's your digital match program. Mm-hmm. And here was a couple of European games. I, I, I guess that the game against Falkirk that's coming up will also be part of this additional value because that's going to be on Premier Sports as well. Um, look, the twenty five percent you're talking about, you're talking about getting the sort of the pie, the Bovril, um and the program. I guess Celtic will say they've covered the program by putting it out in a digital format. Is the twenty five percent really the, the free pie and the Bovril that you're getting alongside the padded seats or? Surely there should be something in there for the the kind of non executive or non investor fans. I wouldn't. I wouldn't, dis- well. I wouldn't disagree, Colin. And, and I think the Celtic TV coverage has been has been slightly disappointing in terms of um, the reliability of the stream, the delay on the stream, uh, 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 and the quality of pundit expert analysis that we've had when we began with um, with guys like Michael Stewart and, and Rory Hamilton on commentary. It looked it looked very good. They haven't been able to maintain that that standard, and and that's been that's been one disappointment amongst uh, amongst many others this season. I would I would have to agree. Amy, thoughts? Are fans should fans 
I'll say, be looking for something similar to what the investors are getting as a offer of a refund or pre- perhaps a reduction in their season ticket next season. Because as, as David says, it's a, it's a sensitive issue and you can never really talk generically for, for everyone. So it's just going to be one of these ones that you're just going to ride out over these next few weeks, months, and it's, it really is just going to be every individual to themselves, I feel. I mean, I, I guess it will be interesting when we see what comes out. I think a lot of fans, if they're offered a refund, it will be up to them whether to take it or not. We've seen quite a lot of people um, didn't take it last year f- um, for the, the previous season for the games that we lost out on. A lot of people then took it as performances kind of got worse throughout the season. And there's still quite a few people out there that haven't even been interested in taking it. A lot of people that took it maybe reinvested it in this year's season ticket. Maybe they reinvested it in all the new kind of Adidas um, stuff that came out as part of that new kit deal. I would be very surprised if fans that were offered that money don't then reinvest it in some form at Celtic as well. I don't think that the loss to Celtic would be that massive. And you also see the the idea that's been floated by the Celtic Trust um, about turning that into shares. And I think everyone has their own opinions on that. Um, but yeah, this is probably going to be the most interesting few weeks of the season um, and it's planning for next season and what Celtic will actually do um, but the fact that they've already started this correspondence with the um, the sort of club Celtic ticket holders as you were mentioning David, I think Celtic fans in general should be looking out for something um, whether it be on social media or in the post over the next few weeks um, So I can't believe we're over 50 minutes in and always talked about as a, a seven question interview so far um, and passing our good wishes on to Moussa Dembele um, but Amy we, we haven't been um, on here since the, the game at the weekend and David it's been great having you on so I'm just going to try and get your quick views on uh, the performance at the weekend Amy I'll start with yourself um, who, who kind of shone for you and where did it kind of go wrong in that sense like it was a promising first 45 um, things were going right <sighs> then even in that midst though you're going it's promising and I really didn't have a lot of optimism I just thought when you're not putting chances away and you're not really capitalising on being the better side you know maybe a season two seasons ago we, we could get away with that and we'd, we'd grab a goal in the 8th minute 90th minute or whatever that's not the script these days even we go ahead and you're, just, you're not feeling that confidence it's a tough one. It's you heard. You used to hear clubs we talking. My friends would talk to me that, or oh, even one up against Celtic, you don't feel confident because they're going to come back and they'll get that equaliser. I mean, they get the equaliser, they're going to they're going to um, kick on. That's how I feel now. Not even that heading one nil up. You're just not feeling that sort of optimism and feeling in a sort of, you know, obviously joy, but you're not feeling right. We're going to kick on from here. It's just sort of plain and you just feel there's so many as David spoke about already there's so many defensive frailties um, every set piece and it's an, an it's an intake of breath the corners you know we can we can talk into it but you, you can just sort of really say it all season there was just a lot going wrong at the weekend I was quite impressed with Ellie Noose in the first 45 mm-hmm. I thought he was actually quite a positive I am um, took his goal well and I thought he was probably one of the brighter sparks but other than that in that second 45 I think just really epitomised everything it was it was dull I never really you don't really get any sort of joy excitement and I just feel it's flat and I think as well you're taking a lot into consideration the week that Rangers have had mm-hmm. and and that's the killer you know we've already wrapped up the league and they're probably still drunk then you look at everything that happened on Thursday you can talk about a, a European hangover as well but like I said it's not even the football that matters everything that that club and, and Glen Kamara have went through and the way that they've they've handled certain things and it's rightly so that obviously that Celtic showed their solidarity with Rangers it is and we can talk about that in great depth or whatever but at the end of the day it was the right thing to do um, and I just feel at this time you know we should really be hitting ahead of Rangers we've, we've had however many days we were, we're like 10 days without a game or something like that or a week without a game you know you would never have thought this was the side that had this rest period and hadn't had the hectic week that Rangers have had and and like I say there was just there was no real fight in spirit and that just well that's just the story of our season isn't it there is literally no fight in spirit within that side yeah I think you could see it towards the last sort of 25 minutes of the game 
there was a lot of heavy legs on the field. Um, and you, I actually could see why David Turnbull now gets taken off. I think you could see him really tiring. That chance when he could have went through on goal, he was just kind of s- slow to get to it, slow to take advantage of it. Um, and Stephen Davis managed to come back and get the tackle in on him. Uh, I, I think you can see for that reason why he gets taken off. For me, when I looked at the lineups, the thing that really surprised me was Leon Balligan playing at right back. And I think in the first 45 minutes, Celtic really got at him. Um, and you can see that's obviously where the goal came from. Um, but we just didn't take enough advantage of it. I mean, it was a guy playing completely out of position. Um, they also had Nathan Patterson sitting on the bench who they eventually brought on. Once they brought that on, that weak link got removed um, and Laxalt didn't get as much um, success down the left-hand side as what he was getting in the first half, David. But when you take a look at the goal that we conceded, how we managed to concede from that position, <laughs> that just sums up Celtic season. The ball was on the halfway line and then within a minute and a half, it's in the back of the net. It's so frustrating. And I mean, so many people have said that the goal encapsulated our entire season and in many ways it did. Entirely avoidable. Uh, absolutely no danger whatsoever. Uh, John Joe Kenny passed back from near the halfway line, goes awry, and from the resultant corner, where we appeared to be practicing zonal marking, you know, more or less scores at the back post. Just, just incredibly disappointing. We we should have won that game. Uh, it, it's so frustrating. We were terrorising them down the Celtic left, Rangers right in the first half. Um, should have been. Uh, two up minimum half time instead we go in mm-hmm. at, at one each but it was it was a much improved performance uh, the, the 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 difference between the performance on sunday and the performance against them in the early days of january was that you know you know we 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 dominated possession for large chunks of the game and we created chances that game uh, that that game uh, back at the turn of the year we did not create very many clear cut chances uh, and i don't think there were any after after half time this time much more in the way of clear cut chances we just didn't take them uh, Ed, edward nothing like ruthless enough and and, and others spurned opportunities as well um, but but it, it was an encouraging performance, just disappointing and frustrating. We couldn't beat them. If ever there was a time to really go for the jugular, that was it. Rangers coming off mm-hmm. that difficult fixture against Slavia Prague Thursday night with all the fallout from Glenn Kamara and, 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 and Kimar Roof, and we still didn't stick it to them. So just 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 incredibly frustrating. Two, two big upsides for me, I thought James Forrest played a very nice cameo when he came on, just, just sort of back to those sort of trademark... Uh, surging runs in from from the right that we've uh, we've grown to know and love, and I thought Stephen Welsh and, and Chris Iyer um, mm-hmm. both had excellent games in in, in the middle of the defence. The, the, the goal the goal notwithstanding, um, Welsh looks. I mean, he he he's a real he, he's a real find. He nearly scored as well. Um, and, and if Iyer does go at the end of this season, and it seems almost inevitable that he will, then he's going to be a big big miss. Yeah, and I'm just going to touch on the substitutions in a second. Um, but I just want to bring up this point because you, you mentioned it. Um, the, the Glenn Kamara scenario, um, I think everyone in Scottish football was horrified to see what happened to Glenn Kamara on Thursday night. Um, and the way that Scott Brown reacted um, just showed the class that he's got. Um, and it was great to see both sides kind of standing up in this fight against racism. Um, both, the, both the teams, what could be said about fans off, offline and on social media, that's nothing at all to do with what happened on the park. It was just a great gesture shown by both teams. Um, but on the substitutions, 79 minutes before we made the first sub, how many times were you screaming at it, bring on this player, bring on that player? And we just left it so late. And when the subs came on, it was like for like. We didn't actually go for it. The worst one was bringing on, sorry, um, bringing on Griffiths for Eddie. Just go to up front, have a go at them. They were there for the taking. And it just... It, it kind of felt as if we were just like we're, we're both teams are content for the one point and we'll move on from there. And, and Griff, if, Griff came on with what three minutes to go, something like that. Yeah, uh, Eighty-nine yeah. minutes. What, yeah. what could he? What could he do? It was uh. Uh, for me that that showed for me, and I don't know what you uh, both think, but that shows for me Kennedy isn't cut out to be a manager at this level. It's carbon copy of Lennon. You know, when it was Neil Lennon in charge, we're going, why is he making substitutes? Like, Neil Lennon doesn't make a substitution before 70 minutes. 
as you said, right, we can talk about like, why you're not going two up top. Why in God's name are you bringing on Lee Griffiths with two, three minutes to go? What are you expecting this man to do? Now, I'm seeing it coming through in the comments. People are going right for Lee Griffiths, blaming him that we've not won the 10 because he's not fit. You say what you want about Griffiths, but you cannot, I, I don't care who you're bringing on, you can bring on Messi. You're given two minutes. Like, give give the guy a chance. The thing is, we can see it uh, as fans, um, and people are saying we're sitting here with, with tinted glasses and a little bit of hindsight. Rangers were tied in. Everybody was tied in. It was heavy legs. Yet, still, Rangers finished the match, probably the stronger of the sides. Mm-hmm. Why is Griffiths? So, if, if he's not fit, don't have him on the bench. If he is fit, Give him a little bit, give him 10, 15 minutes. You can't give him two, three minutes, maybe going to get on the end of one ball if he's lucky. Um, it's just, it's not even really worth talking about. Everybody in football knows that, that. You just cannot think that these substitutions are always going to work right at the death. You know, maybe once in a blue moon, you'll get that first touch finish from, from your substitute with a minute to go or whatever. But my God, it's just, like I say, it's carbon copy of, um, of Lennon. And that is why fans don't want Kennedy. And I know people are saying you've not really seen him, give him a chance. He's obviously doing something right. He's have learned something from Rodgers, etc., etc. But right now he's not showing anything. He's using that Lennon model. And like I say, everything isn't that different to what it was two, three months ago. Yeah, and uh, David, John Kennedy going for the Frank Connors approach of just maintaining this unbeaten run whilst being an interim uh, position as manager. It, it did. He just he played for the point. At no point did it look as if we were trying to win that game after probably sixty-five minutes. Yeah, difficult. Uh, uh, and and um, I, I think I think we could ask as well why um, guys like Barkas aren't being given a, a tryout at this stage of the season. I mean, are we going to hang on to Barkas? Uh, do we see him as a, a you know some kind of reclamation project now, or are we going to get? Is he going to be sold in, in the summer? But if there's any, if there's ever a time to try him in in, in a relatively low pressure environment, it, it's between now and the end of the season in terms of the league campaign, and and, and yet we persist with. Uh, with Scott Bain in goal, um, uh, so yeah, the the, the, the sun, Sunday Sunday certainly raised as as, as many questions as, as it answered. But I, I thought it was a I thought it was actually on the whole a good performance, but one that lacked a, a sadly lacked a killer instinct. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> a bit that kind of um, almost put the fear in you was when uh, Scott Bain hammered the ball off Stephen Welsh and he went in. If that was the case, oh, that would have just put the icing on the terrible cake that has been Celtic season um, and then the fact that you can just laugh about it, that that was that was scary, um, but again conceding from a corner uh, sorry, yeah conceding from a corner, when you look at the amount of goals we've conceded from set pieces this season I think it's in the kind of upper 70% of all the league goals have came either directly or indirectly from a set piece we, we just don't seem to learn from our mistakes do we? No, and that's something that that uh, you, you would hope that the the new coach, whoever that is, will, will will address and sort out in time for the Champions League qualifiers in July. And that's another reason, never mind season ticket cam- campaign renewals, why we need to get somebody in sooner rather than later. The clock is ticking in terms of recruitment, in terms of preparation time for uh, qualifiers in July, uh, and we need to we need to move quickly because I, I think the, the 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 faults that we have. Uh, 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 are not um, they're not especially deep rooted. They are addressable. They can be fixed. I think they can be fixed over the course of this summer, by and large. But we need to start work now. Yeah, definitely. I think we can all agree on that. And it's been great. Apologies to everyone who is getting involved in the comment section. But there's just been so much to discuss today that we've not really had the chance to bring everything up. We do appreciate you getting involved. We are reading your comments, and it does actually come into play when we give our own responses here. Um, is that some of the comments that come through. Um, David, it's been fantastic having you on. Um, thank you for coming on to dissect what was an interesting update coming out of Dermot Desmond's uh, laptop. Amy, you are back on Sunday um, with the Soccer Supernova. Who have you got on this week? I have Danny Swanson this week, Colin. That'll be an interesting one. It was really uh, pretty good. I enjoyed that. I really did enjoy it. And good was guy. it John Daly last week? It was John Daly on Sunday, yeah. So, yeah, it was, um, it's going well. Good few guests lined up as well, so yeah, it's uh, it's exciting. Please tell me you asked Danny Swanson about the on-field fight that he had. Oh, I 
think he brought it up himself. I'm pretty sure he brought it up himself, um, and he just sort of went, hmm? um, so yeah, it was, um, oh, it was a really good chat. He's really down to earth, and it was, um, yeah, it was a good one. Some, some interesting insights, and obviously he played under Lennon as well at Hibs. So it was, um, it was obviously it was filmed a few weeks ago as well. So it was, um, it was all, it was all quite good timing actually. So. <laughs> Well, I look forward to seeing that on Sunday, David. We look forward to having you back at some point on A Celtic State of Mind. Myself and Amy will definitely be back next Wednesday. Um, check us out on uh, A State of Mind. We have now surpassed Aberdeen Football Club for the amount of subscriptions that we have on YouTube. We are climbing that uh, footballing ladder. Do get involved. Leave us a comment after the show. Let us know how you get on. That really helps us. It gets us up there. Like and subscribe. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. Paul John will be back with John Paul and Declan. That always gets more difficult every week to say um, with the Thursday um, Celtic State of Mind Bulletin. But until then, everyone, have a great day. Stay safe and as always, hail, hail. 